Well, I'm in specific love. Today I want to do something special for a friend of ours who's having a baby. So the nursery they have is quite small. So we wanted to make something that is pretty narrow, that can sit on the wall, but it can do two things for them. One, they now have some extra storage space here. And two, it creates a little bit of a table, so if they want to have a drinks or maybe even a plate or something, they can put it here. It's not a lot of weight, but it's a way they can have some extra room. And it just closes right up. Very simple, and it hangs in a wall. Let me show you how I made this. First, we needed a medium picture frame that could hold a little weight. Fortunately, my wife found an old frame from my grandmother's old collection, which was made of hardwood. It measured 16 inches tall and just over 13 inches wide. I also found that the frame was not perfectly square, but it was close enough for our needs. To create the rear box, I picked up a 1x4x6 pine board. I chose pine because it's easy to work with and inexpensive. I measured and cut two pieces at 16 inches and two at 11 and 5 eighths. With a quick test fit, everything lined up perfectly with the frame. I then gently went over all of the edges with my belt sander to remove any burrs. To hold the box together, I started out with some wood glue. Putting wood glue on the end grain doesn't always work the best, but it won't hurt this project either. Then bracing the wood against the wall, I used a brad nail to secure each board in place. To give this box an antique look, my wife chose a weathered gray color. This is a one-step stain and poly application. I also lifted a box off the table with some chopsticks to keep it from sticking to the paper below. One coat did very well, but I decided to add a second for added protection. While the box was drying, it was time to work on the frame. So I grabbed a sanding block and 400 grit sandpaper and proceeded to remove the top glossy coating off of the frame. With all the small valleys, this took a little longer than I expected, but the paint should adhere very well. I then grabbed a dark leather brown spray paint and gave it a few coats and waited for it to dry. After the initial coat of brown that we put on the frame, we discovered that it didn't really match with the, the weather gray that was on the box. So we decided to go back and paint it a black. Now I put a few coats of black on there and discovered that it had a real bad orange peel all throughout, especially in the lower portions. So I went back and I sanded, sanded, and sanded some more. And after a few more coats of black, I discovered that it still had a very, very faint look to it of the orange peel, but it gave it more of an antique look, which I'm very happy to go with. So now that the black matches a lot better with the weather gray, that's what we're gonna go with. After the box was dry, it needed a strong backing that would give it strength and keep items from falling out of the back. Fortunately, I had some old wood paneling that had a weathered gray appearance that matched well with the box. It also happened to be the correct width, so I just had to trim it to the needed length. I then took it to the belt sander and smoothed all of the edges. Looking at the back of the box, I discovered that some of the poly coating had leaked underneath and created some high spots. So I grabbed my knife and carefully scraped them off. I double checked the measurements of the frame and box one last time, and then I attached a panel with some small brown nails. The backing looked even better than I had hoped. It was now time to attach the frame to the front of the box. To do this, I used a pair of 1 inch utility hinges. I first test fitted the locations and then using a small 1 16th inch bit, I drilled some pilot holes into the box. With the first screw in place, I realized they set too high and would cause clearance issues with the frame. So using a 5 32nd inch bit, each of the holes in the hinges were enlarged slightly. With a quick test fit, they looked much lower. I then raised the box with a couple pieces of wood to allow it to align the hinges with the frame. The area on the edge of the frame is very thin. So I marked the location of the hinges and drilled a pilot hole for each screw. The screws were a little hard to install, but they worked great. The hinges fit snugly in place and pivoted well between the box and the frame. I had originally planned to use a magnet lock from an old cabinet, but the distance between the inside of the box and the frame edge was too wide. So my backup plan called for some neodymium magnets and small washers. On the outside corners and at the center edge of the box, I carefully drilled a shallow 3 8 inch hole. The hole has to be deep enough to hold the magnet flush with the top edge, so there is maximum surface contact. Using a small screw, facing up from within the hole, made it easy to mark the center location for the washer on the frame. And then use a two-part epoxy to secure each magnet in each hole. The epoxy also worked well for securing the washers. To keep the frame from extending past the desired angle, it needed some rope attached to the top edge. My wife found some old lanyards that happened to be the perfect length. I attached the frame side with staples and used some screw hooks on the inside of the box. The hooks will allow adjustment in the future. Now since we plan to use the back of the frame as a small table, it needed some reinforcing to protect the photos and not break the glass. So I trimmed out another piece of paneling to fit just inside the frame. 
We did do one last minute change. Now this is an additional shelf that we put in here. It is just standard wood color. I did not have time to uh, get it to look exactly like the outside here because I don't have time for it to cure before we give this away. But overall, I think it looks good in itself. In addition, if the owners want to additionally change that to make it look like the outside, that's an easy fix, easy paint on, and give it a day or so to cure. But overall, that way they can have a double layer, you can put something large on here, something small up here, and it'll work great for their storage. I then realized the extra paneling was a challenge to keep in place. So I added a couple of 3M Velcro type pitcher holders to the back of the pitcher cardboard and to the panel. They work great. And finally I added the hangers to the back of the box and it was ready to give away. If you enjoyed this build as much as we did, make sure you click the like button and tell us what you think about it in the comments. We put new videos out every week, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you get emails every time we get a new video. Have fun building.